Hi there, I'm Bridget Waster. I am a meat scientist at NCBA, and today I'm in the Beef at Switzerland Interculinary Center. Uh, we're going to talk today about how to break down your own beef at home, and we're going to do that with a beef tenderloin. Uh, one of the reasons that you'd want to break down your own beef at home is to really save on your purchase. So if you make one initial investment up front and make a bigger beef purchase and purchase a full tenderloin, and you cut that yourself at home, you can save up to $2 per pound by doing that DIY cutting or butchery at home for yourself. Plus it can be kind of fun. So we'll talk through how to do that for a beef tenderloin. So we chose tenderloin to do today and, and the primary reason, well, two, two different reasons. One, the tenderloin is the most tender cut of beef available. So you're gonna get a great eating experience and it's very forgiving when it comes time to prepare the cuts we'll make from the tenderloin. Um, the other reason is that the tenderloin is really versatile. So you'll show that I'll make you a mix of roasts and fillets and steaks and tips so it can really stretch across multiple different meals and meal occasions and again help stretch that initial purchase for beef. So again some of the foundational reasons for why you might want to cut your own beef at home is that you're taking on some of the work that the butcher would be doing in the store and so you really are going to save some on your purchase. Again up to two dollars per pound. Uh, buying beef in bulk you need to think about your initial purchase and how it would stretch across different costs per servings or cost per meal. So it's not just that one initial investment you make, it's how many different servings and how many different meals you can get from that one initial purchase. So we're doing the tenderloin today. Um, this is something that you can pretty easily find at your grocery store, at your butcher, at your big box or club store, uh, but you could also do this with different cuts. Uh, for example, like the ribeye or the strip loin or the top sirloin or other large pieces of beef that you can find and do uh, the own, your own cutting at home. So we're gonna do this with the tenderloin today. Um, I'll show you that we have here a whole tenderloin still in the vacuum package bag. That's the type of packaging we have here, vacuum packaging. This is the type of purchase that I'm talking about. You'd buy a whole tenderloin, again, at your butcher, at your big box or club store, at your local grocery store. If you don't see it out in the case, just ask your butcher, ask them if it's available for you to buy a whole beef tenderloin still in the vacuum package bag. Vacuum packaging really um, helps with beef storage because there's no oxygen getting through to the beef underneath, so it helps preserve the beef and helps with storage. And this is how um, you would get it if you get a whole tenderloin in a vacuum package bag. So I'm going to set that aside because I have another tenderloin here that I have removed from the vacuum package bag. So this is what it will look like once you take it out of the bag. I've also patted it dry with paper towels. So this will be the starting point for our video demo today. Again, this is a whole beef tenderloin out of the vacuum package bag and padded dry. And just to redo the intro for anyone who might be joining us late, I'm Bridget Wasser, a meat scientist at NCBA. I'm in the Beef and Sweats for Dinner Culinary Center, typically where we develop and triple test all the recipes on beefandsweatsfordinner.com. Uh, but today where we're doing a little bit of a demo on video for you of how you can cut your own beef at home, and we are cutting a beef tenderloin. So we're going to start um, with the process here of cutting, but I'll, I'll tell you a few of the tools that you'll need to make sure you can do a good uh, job with this. So you'll need your tenderloin, and then you'll also need a large cutting board. I have a large plastic cutting board here. Um, I also have a tray where I'm going to put uh, some, any of my trimmings or my final cuts. Um, you'll also need knives, obviously. Um, you'll need sharp knives. So what I have here are two different knives that I use a lot. And obviously I, I do a lot of beef cutting, so I have kind of more professional style knives. This is a beef boning knife. It's a little bit smaller, it's flexible. This is a steak cutting or breaking knife that I'll use to cut steaks with. Um, but you can really use any knives that you have at home. Um, you could use an, a utility knife, for example, in place of this boning knife, maybe a chef's knife in place of this uh, breaking or steak cutting knife. But the key is you want to make sure that you have sharp knives before you start. That's going to make this much easier on you because you want to make nice, clean cuts through this uh, beautiful tender wing. We don't want to do a lot of sawing um, and, and kind of mess up the surface of our, the steaks that we're going to cut from this. And it would just be more work if your knives are dull. So make sure your knives are sharp before you get started. I also have paper towels handy. Um, especially when we're patting dry the tenderloin before we start, I have a trash can handy. And I'm wearing an apron just to protect my clothes. It's totally optional if you want to wear an apron or not. So those are some of the major tools that you will need um, to get started here. So we'll, we'll focus in on the tenderloin now and talk through the different steps of how to break down or cut your own beef tenderloin. So it's, when you look at the beef tenderloin, this end here 
is the larger end, and it's also referred to as the head. Um, it's just the larger end, or the, also known as the butt end of the tenderloin. This would be the main body of the tenderloin, and then it kind of tapers down on this end, and this is what's referred to as the tail. Now there's also a muscle that runs along the side here. We call this the chain. And so the chain needs to be removed as the first step of cutting your own tenderloin. So there's a, what's called a seam, a natural seam, that connects this chain to the main body of the tenderloin. So you'll see that I'm just kind of going the length of the tenderloin, I'm just gently pulling away this chain that is attached to the side. Okay, so I can do a lot of that just with my hands. And then when I get to the point on this large end where I can't pull anymore, I'll get my knife and make a cut just straight down to the table to remove the chain. Again, this is a, a, attached to the, the side of the tenderloin and we wanna remove that as a first step. So this is the chain. I'm actually gonna set it aside for now and we'll come back to it at the end and show you how you can use that. Okay, so with the rest of the tenderloin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of work to finish cleaning up this tenderloin bef before we start cutting. And this is just an extra step to take to make sure you can really get the most tenderness out of this purchase that you made for the beef tenderloin. If you see here, there's something on the outside that's referred to as a silver skin. This tenderloin is pretty well cleaned up. There's not quite a, very much fat on the outside, but there is some silver skin, which is this thin membrane or connective tissue layer that's on the surface of the tenderloin. So what I'm doing here is I get my, my smaller knife just right underneath the surface of that silver skin and then I remove that silver skin. And this is gonna be discarded. This uh, is not tender, so we wanna remove this before we cut steaks. So again, I get my knife just underneath the silver skin and I cut horizontally along the tenderloin. You just wanna avoid cutting vertically and gouging down into this great piece of beef. So I'm gonna remove all the tenderloin, or all the silver skin that we see here on the surface of the tenderloin. Now, obviously I've done this several times, um, so just have fun with it, practice it, and you'll get better as you go. Um, always practice good knife safety, and again, just, just kind of have fun with it. You'll get better um, as you do more of these. I'm also trimming off just a little bit of, of fat that's left on here. You can trim as much or as little of the fat as you want off of the tenderloin, but do remove all the silver skin. I'm going to flip it over. I don't have a lot of silver skin on this side but just a little bit of extra fat that I'm gonna come in and trim off again with my smaller knife. You could use a utility knife for this. Okay, again, you can trim as much as, or as little as you want. It's totally a preference thing and it's up to you. Okay, so I'll flip the tenderloin back over and we'll start the cutting process. I'm gonna start at the larger end here and I'm gonna show you a tenderloin roast. So I'm gonna cut a tenderloin roast. I'm gonna leave this larger end intact and where it starts to taper in here, I'm gonna make my cut and this will be a tenderloin roast. Now again, you wanna make one clean, confident cut um, through the tenderloin. Avoid sawing through it to, um, to, to really interfere with the surface of your meat. You want that nice, clean surface. So this is a beef tenderloin roast. This would feed probably four to six people and it would be oven roasted. So it makes for a great uh, meal maybe for family or friends. You wanna put that in the oven, maybe even a holiday. Be a great roast for that. So with the rest of the tenderloin here, I'm gonna cut a series of steaks. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut thicker filet mignons. That's probably a term that you're familiar with. The filet does come from the tenderloin, and those are typically cut thicker from the center portion of the tenderloin. So I'm gonna cut two thick filet mignons. So the way I would define the thickness of these would just be probably anything thicker than an inch. Um, so the filets are gonna be cut a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna go thicker than an inch and I'm gonna cut two of those and try to get them to about the same size or the same thickness. So those are thicker filet mignons. Again, very popular to see those on restaurant menus. You're gonna see them in grocery stores. Those are perfect on the grill, a great celebratory meal as well. Um, and those are cut a little bit thicker, so they're gonna take a little bit more time and attention when I'm preparing those. I wanna make sure when those are cooking on the grill, I don't overcook the outside of that steak and, and get the middle just right. So with the rest of the tenderloin, I'm, I'm actually gonna cut some thinner um, tenderloin steaks. So these are gonna be an inch or even thinner, maybe a half inch up to an inch. I'm gonna cut these about an inch. Um, these are a little bit thinner, so it's just gonna make them a little bit easier and quicker um, to cook these or grill these maybe on a weeknight. Um, and it gives me, again, some versatility from this whole tenderloin. Again, it's really customizable. 
So if you choose to cut the entire tenderloin into fillets, you're welcome to do that. Or if you choose to roast the entire thing, maybe for a holiday meal, that works as well. You can get creative, but I do like these thinner tenderloin steaks for having in the freezer and being able to pull, that, pull out for a quick weeknight meal. Um, these are just as tender as the fillets. They're just cut slightly thinner, so they're gonna cook a little bit quicker. Okay, so I have here the, what's left, which is the tenderloin tail. And again, we want to use everything we can to maximize the purchase. So for the tenderloin tail, I could cut a couple different things. I could cut kebabs that would work great on the grill, or I could also cut smaller pieces for tenderloin tips, which would work great in, as an ingredient in something like beef stroganoff. Okay, so with the tenderloin tail, I'm going to cut this into kebabs. And the way to do that is we're just going to cut even squares from this tenderloin tail. So I might cut two or three strips here. And then you can take each one of those individually and cut even squares. So a kebab is gonna be slightly bigger than the tips. I'll show you how to cut here in a second. But you wanna just practice getting these even, uh, whatever size you're cutting them to, because they'll actually cook more evenly if they are cut more evenly. Okay, so you just want nice, even squares. And these would be great for kebabs. So you um, skewer them um, with vegetables and put them right on the grill. Now I'm going to bring back the chain that I removed earlier. So this chain, we want to be able to use this as well. So again, we maximize the purchase. So I'm just going to trim off some of the heavy fat. Again, this is preference. You can leave as much or as little of this fat on the chain as you want. But uh, with the chain, what I'm going to do is show you how to make tenderloin tips. So you could also make kebabs for these, but tips would be any portion of what's left from the tenderloin, the tail of the chain, and you just want to cut it into slightly smaller squares um, than we did for the kebabs. So the kebabs are going to be a little bit bigger, the tenderloin tips are going to be a little bit smaller. Um, again, these work great as an ingredient for something like a beef stroganoff, so they're great to have on hand for something like that. Again, you do want to cut them as evenly as possible, um, just so that they will cook evenly. Now with what's left from the tail or the chain, you could also use that for grinding for burgers. So if you happen to have access to a grinder, uh, maybe a hand grinder or electric grinder, uh, some people will use this, these trimmings and, and make those into ground beef for burgers. So that's a great way to use uh, what's left of the tenderloin as well. But again, the goal is to use as much as you possibly can to really maximize your purchase. So let's review what we cut and what we have here on the cutting board. So first I have the tenderloin roast that I cut from the large end of the tenderloin. This would serve maybe four to six people. Perfect roast for putting in the oven. A roast is just a piece of beef that's bigger than a steak. So that's why this piece is larger and it needs to be prepared in the oven as opposed to on the grill, for example. But this would be great for entertaining. Say I have friends or family coming over, that'd be a perfect, um, a perfect option to serve them. And then I cut two thicker filet mignons, right? These are kind of uh, something that everybody's familiar with and a lot of people love. This makes for a great celebratory meal, so I might save those two for a, a, a celebratory meal with my husband. And then I cut several thinner tenderloin steaks, just a little bit thinner than the filet mignons, really help stretch the purchase here of the tenderloin, and they're a little bit quicker to cook on the grill because they're just a little bit thinner. I also made a series of kebabs that I could skewer and put on the grill from the tenderloin tail, as well as tips from the chain that I could use as ingredient beef. Okay, so that's kind of just to show you a variety of things that you can cut from the tenderloin and know that you can mix and match this to, your, to, to what you prefer. Okay, and then the last thing is just to show you there's different ways to uh, package these so you can extend your investment. One would be in a vacuum package bag. This is a, a vacuum sealer that you can find at many stores and many on, online retailers. You want to make sure you label your bags with what you cut and the date so these don't get lost in the freezer. They'll last about four to six months in the freezer. You can also use kind of DIY the zip top freezer safe bags here. Um, same deal, label it, make sure you press all of the air out of this before it goes in the freezer and freeze this beef in a single layer so it's easier and quicker to thaw. Okay, so that's how you preserve your purchase through storage. And just to wrap, um, again, this was a cutting of a whole beef tenderloin. You can do this at home to save up to $2 per pound by cutting your own beef at home. Um, remember to visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com for tips on beef cuts. Um, meal inspiration, recipe ideas, and also remember to leave your comments in the comments section and we will make sure we respond back to you directly. 
So I'm signing out here and just on behalf of the Beef Checkoff, I want to thank you for joining us today.